This show should have been named Rebels, the live action series, and Ahsoka. So Rebels aired for four seasons from 2014 to 2018. And no, I haven't seen it. Unless you count maybe, I don't know, six episodes. I recommend you do watch Rebels because Ahsoka is heavily based off the animated series. And if you're like me, who didn't watch Rebels, you're gonna find yourself scratching your head. Let's just say if Clone Wars and Rebels had a live action baby, it would be Ahsoka. Right off the bat, episode one throws you right in. It's the New Republic versus what's left of the Empire. Rosario Dawson, she plays Ahsoka. She nails it. The look, the feel, the dual lightsabers. I think what I like about her the most is her character's tone, as in the way she speaks. It's direct, but gentle, if that makes any sense. All I gotta say is Ahsoka has ice in her veins because it could be a world ending situation and she never seems to get worked up. I need to know what meds she's on because um, I could use some of that. I thought the show was going to revolve around Ahsoka, but unfortunately it revolves around the original cast of Rebels as well. So that could be a good or bad thing. I, I would have much preferred if the entire series revolved around just Ahsoka. She is the sun. Everyone else should revolve around her. You know, like the old saying goes, it, it is what it is. The Mandalorian, Sabine. <sighs> I just feel there's something missing about her or not enough with her. And for an adult, she acts like such a child. You know, immature, self-centered, thoughtless. She doesn't really offer any real value to the team. If there's a season two, her character is gonna need some serious overhauling. And then there's Hera. She's now a general of the New Republic. And... I have no complaints. <laughs> so like other Star Wars media from Lucasfilm, the action sequences, they don't disappoint. The lightsaber fights, the space chases, all that jazz. It's everything you would expect. I mean, it's top notch for the most part, but I feel near the end of the series, the CG kind of falls off and <laughs> it's quite obvious. As much as I liked Ahsoka, there were some improvement areas, I think. Um, number one is Sabine. Again, I just, I can't get behind her character, man. I just, she annoyed the hell out of me. I don't know how else to put it. I mean, again, in this season, she adds very little value to the team. And the story, regrettably, it's not very unique and it doesn't stand on its own. It suffers from overused tropes that I think many TV shows and movies fall into nowadays. So nothing's really gonna surprise you. And for the most part, you kind of see how everything's gonna happen. If you're not searching for a person, you're searching for a thing. If you're not searching for a thing, you're searching for a person. You know what I mean? Along with that, I think the villains, they fall a bit short as well. They just come across as bland and dull. They lack any type of passion. If you're looking for strong emotional dialogue, I really, I can't really think of anything that comes to the top of my head. What I can say about Ahsoka is that I really, really like the musical score. Kevin Kiner is a fantastic composer, and there were times when the music just got me. Chills down to my bones, right into my very soul. If you're not really interested in the series, just watch episode five. It's really hard to put into words, but as an Ahsoka fan, it offered something that many of us were looking for and longing for. If season one was just episode five, I would be happy. <laughs> I understand wanting to walk away from the order. I know.